Well, two is the lower esophageal sphincter. Good. And number 12 would be the polar sphincter. They just show it like that. Right. So let's do some curvature. Let's do number 14. Greater, greater. greater curvature. Big bend, literally, if you do it in Latin. So therefore, number six must be the lesser. 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 So you get a big and little. The same wording goes to the next two. You have an omentum. There are two. Greater. There's one that hangs off the greater one as an apron over your intestines. That would be the greater omentum. There's one that comes up from this one to your liver. That would be the lesser omentum. So this is going to show the omentum. But they would be greater and lesser. There's only one model, which is back over there, that shows an omentum. Hey, hmm, number, let's find some. Number 15, my favorite word. Rugue, guaranteed to be on your quiz. The bumps and folds in your stomach. And you can't see kind, I hope. Right? Is that for absorption purposes or mixing? Stretch out your stomach. Oh, so okay. as your stomach fills, they flatten and compress. Are you saying that the lesser omentum then is like a bump in the stomach and the yes. greater omentum is below? Yes, that'd be how I do. So are the rugae like wrinkles? Because wrinkles, it's folds. Okay. How do you want to phrase it? Is that different from the mesentery? Yes, mesentery is within the intestinal folds. It's, it's holding the intestines as a big lump, but this would hang over them as an apron. Okay. So you have an apron and a mesentery, a mentum and a mesentery. Yes, a little bit. So they help. That's just a muscle there. So let's zip on down to small intestine. We'll just finish the big models first here. So tell me about starting here to there. What is that? Duodenum. Duodenum or duodenum, you can say either way, it's okay. First bend of your small intestine. I'm going to zoom in on a different model here. It should be this one. Yeah. So if you look at 491, this bend would be what I call duodenum. So that first kind of curve. Then there's a middle section which they removed here. What was the middle section? Jejunum. Jejunum. And the last part, number 521, would be the ileum. ileum. So you have duodenum, jejunum, and ileum are the three parts of your small intestine. Right? So we're going to find a few things in there. So let me go back there. Back. Oh, too far. I want to go to this one here. Okay, this is showing a close-up of just the duodenum. Your stomach would be here. Jejunum's over here. And I want you to look at this number 18, right there. I click on number 18, it should get bigger. I did this one. There's a close-up of number 18. There's a hole there, a bump. What do you call that bump at number 18? Major duodenal papilla. Indeed, major duodenal papilla, meaning big duodenum bump. That's your big duodenum bump. And there's a sphincter there. What do you call the sphincter at the bump? Pancreatic pancreatic sphincter bodi. So literally, liver pancreas valve. Because this is where your liver and your pancreas dump their solutions. That's not a sphincter we talked about in class about the food tube. There's a sphincter to control the liver and pancreas putting their fluids in the small intestine. So that's a major hepato, major duodenal papilla with the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Right, so I go back. Right here is that little thing, and this is my pancreas and liver dumping stuff into my small intestine. That's only in the duodenum. Reading them? Yes? The, so the papilla is just like a little bump, and then there's the uh, sphincter in, in that bump. Right. So the bump. bump has nothing or has everything to do with Yeah, so if I just pointed to them and I didn't specify, you could put either name. If I say the bump, you want the papilla. If I say the sphincter, you want the sphincter. The mini man right there on the counter, he has a very good papilla. You can see it from a mile away with your phone. You want to look at his papilla. Papilla. Let's go down a little further. Let's go down to ileum. There's some things I have to find in my ileum. Is... Oh, there's one of my grandma. Number 520, you're going to name for me. All at once now. That's an ileocecal valve. This is my ileum. That's my cecum, and that's the valve between the two, or ileocecal sphincter. My ileocecal valve. All right? Then we're going to name one more thing, which are the little bumps and folds you see in the intestine. So let's go back, and let's look at this one again. These little ridges you see in the intestine, those are not rugae. <gasps> like what are those? Plica circularis, or plica circularis. 
So those are Plica, these are Rugae. Are those through the entire small intestine? Or yes. Do you want them? They go throughout the entire small intestine. They actually, they tend to decrease in frequency, but they're throughout the small intestine. So if I ask for folds in your intestine, you say Plica. If I ask for folds in your stomach, you say Rugae. Makes sense? Classic question. So let's keep going then. Let's find some large intestine, a.k.a. colon. Same thing, same place. Doesn't matter which one you use. Let's find my colon. Where is my colon? Right here. Okay, so what you want to do on a quiz or test is take your finger, pretend it's poo, all right? You're going to start here. So what is this little sack you're starting in? The cecum with the appendix hanging off. And you're going to take your finger and go up. So what kind of colon is this? Ascending. Ascending. Then we make a turn or a flexure. So which flexure would be here? Hepatic. Hepatic, because it's near your liver. It's on your right side. Then we go across, which I took off. Transverse. Transverse. We make a turn or flexure here. Splenic. Splenic, because my spleen is there. I'm going to go down, descending. And then make an S curve. And I straighten out. And then I come out. There you go. You can't miss a colon if you just take your finger and name the way your finger's going. Right. So let's name the white thing. Number 528. Or 526. What is it? Coli. Tinea coli. Tinea coli. It means tension in your colon. It's a little strip that holds it all together. and makes these bumpy things. What are the bumpy things called? Hostra. Hostra. Not hosta, that's a plant. It's hostra. So each little bump those 527s, those are the hostrels, so called colonic segmentations. Which By the way, the tinea? tinea is the white line. Oh, that makes white. Tinea coli is hostra. Or the trivia, the bumps on your poop are right there. Alright? They'll never forget it. Oh my god. That was a delicate reaction. Just, we're fun at parties, we're really fun. <laughs> Let's go back and find a, a greater sure omentum. I just realized there is a, yeah. a picture of that one. <laughs> Number four is your greater omentum. That's the apron that hangs over the intestines from the greater curvature of the stomach. So if you peel that off, the mesentery is the fat within the intestines, not over them. A little fat apron that shows the omentum here and the mesentery over in there. So we got that, we got that, we got that. Okay, <coughs> now we're stuck basically with some, we don't, we've got some teeth, let's do some teeth. Does the omentum just hang or is it attached? It basically hangs. Okay. I, I was told by a surgeon they hang, they just pull it up just, just like you pull up a shirt. So here's some teeth. You're supposed to know the teeth when you see them. So, let's start with teeth number, not number or anything. This one, what kind of tooth is that? It's an incisor. How many would you have as an adult? Four. Four. Eight. Eight. Two. Let's count. Eight, right? There's four and four. Right, so, you want to do for each tooth type to figure out how many you have in your mouth. Take your finger and bite it if you have right? Okay, so name this one. Canine, or sometimes called a cuspid. <coughs> this one? Premolar. Premolar. Premolar, also called a bicuspid because it has two cups. And this one would be a molar. molar. All right. So you're naming incisor, canine, premolar, or bicuspid molar. So then you're supposed to name the areas within it. So let's do that. Everything, like two and three together, the thing you floss and brush, what is crown, that? Crown. That's the crown, the thing under the ground. Root. Just like it sounds, right? As the ground is the root, right? Now, the thing that your teeth live in, what do you call a gum in dentist speak? Gingiva. Gingiva. Let's do number five on that model. What's five made out of? Enamel. Enamel. Good. What is six made out of? Dentin. Dentin. Very good. What do you call eight? The root canal. Yeah, the pulp cavity officially is eight. The root canal is eight A. So they're both the same thing. But this is just the cavity, this is the canal. So a root canal at a dentist, he's drilling out 8A. Yeah. But isn't the root in it? Yes, it's in the root. But it's just a different name. What do you call the tip of your root canal? Tip. The apical foramen. Apical foramen. Literally tips whole. Right? 